family. Uh, meet uh, Aaron from the Stylist. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? And Loretta from LAMC. I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. This is the second of the web uh, chat series that Storm Asia is organizing. And it's, um, it's, it's a mixed bag of discussion topics. You know, uh, last week we had something on communication. Uh, today we have uh, three illustrious people from the music industry uh, with us. And I'd just like to introduce you before we uh, start the discussion on uh, when will the music start again, right? Because since the pand uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, everything has come to a halt. But let's see. Uh, let me first introduce uh, Aaron Love, uh, who has stayed awake for this session. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So Aaron's original yeah. member of the yeah. Stylistics, which is still a band that is still going strong and still tours regularly. He would have been a computer programmer until music pulled him away. And since then, yeah. the Stylistics <laughs> like, stop, look, listen, you are everything better by golly, wow, sing, baby, sing. And you make me feel brand new. The Stylistics are an important group in pop, uh, delivering fully smooth R&B sound. Uh, Aaron still gets a lot of love from fans around the world. Welcome. Yeah, bless. Thank you for staying away. Yeah, uh, thank next, you. Uh, thank Loretta, you. Loretta Alabons, TV show host of Rolling Good Times and radio DJ turned impresario. Loretta is a co-owner of LAMC Productions and LA Comedy Live. LAMC was found in uh, April 2001 and has brought in international acts like Guns N' Roses, Stereophonics, Metallica, George Benson, Iron Maiden, Nickelback, Lady Gaga, Snow Petrol, Trevor Noah, John Cleese, and so on and so forth. And she's also organized things like the Singapore Rock Fest and Big, uh, Big Night Out. Welcome, thank you. Loretta. Thank, thank you, Kanan, for you know, inviting me on your platform. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here today with Good. all these, um, with Romney Sarip, you know, Ramli, yes. nice Speaking to Ramli, nice. let me let me introduce Ramli as <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah. Dato yeah. Ramli Sari, thank you for joining this session. Affectionately known as Papa Rock and Malaysia's King of Rock. Thank you, Ramli Bennett. is a Singaporean musician, mm -hmm. singer, songwriter, arranger, and record producer who also collects t-shirts. Right? He shot to fame as a frontman of Sweet Charity, a rock band that blew away the competition and worked hard to establish its dominance locally and in the region. As a solo artist, he has built a reputation for delivering music from the heart, which also shaped his unique rendition of the national anthem Majula Singapura at last year's National Day Parade. So welcome three of you and whoever's listening into this uh, session. And it's been a tough time, I think, for music because of the fact that the uh, pandemic has brought everything to a halt. So it is uncertain as to where you're going to go, how things are, when things are going to open up. And meanwhile, you guys are also busy doing different things, right? Projects and concerts and so on and so forth. What have you been doing in the quiet time that has been thrust upon you? Loretta, for you, with so many shows coming in, what, what have you been doing now? Well, I, I have to say that um, I actually enjoyed this um, circuit. We, we, like just for the context of the international listeners and viewers, I mean, in Singapore, we had this thing called the Circuit Breaker. So when we, um, I think April 7th, we started. During that time, we um, kind of said, how can we be a contribution to, you know, the various celebrities, the various artists we work with since there's oh. no tours going on. And one of the things I've always wanted to do, but was not able to because, you know, there was, um, you know, the promotions and concert producing, you know, it's very uh, labor intensive, I would call it. There's a lot of planning, uh, you know, there's a lot of communication and, so that didn't give me enough time to, you know, want to do a kind of a chat show, like, like, you know, do an online streaming or digital show. So with the downtime, I created this uh, um, online show called Words and Music, 
where I just said, why don't I give it a shot? I didn't know how to do it. But what I did first, Kanan, was bought the equipment and okay. then figured it out. Because if I just said, okay, I'm going to do this, but not have the equipment in place, probably I would never have gotten the head start. Yeah. So that's how so it, it happened. Roll approach to things. Yeah. Yeah. Just jump in. And um, yeah, the, the, the people came to set it up in my home. This is my home. Um, and then from there, I just figured out, okay. And then I, I, I caught in, you know, we had uh, Trivium and Slipknot that was supposed to be part of the Singapore Rock Fest this yeah. year. But that show got cancelled because of uh, the situation. And um, so Trivium was the first the first guest on Words and Music. And we've, ever since we've been doing that week after week with a different uh, celebrity guest. Very good. Very yeah. good. Very enterprising. I suppose you need to do that. To uh, keep us sane. I mean, Kanan, exactly. I mean, I, yeah. we, I mean, it's... It's crazy. It's been such a, you know, like yeah. from doing 50 to 60 shows a year and not being able to do anything. Single one, yeah. Ramli so can you imagine? Aaron, yeah. did you have that kind of same sort of feelings going through your mind? Yeah. You know what? Uh, the last show that we did was March 14th. Um, that, in fact, actually was in Philly. Uh, that weekend... Uh, we had a show at the PAC Center in uh, Newark, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and then um, we were scheduled in, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was canceled. Hmm. Then that following week, we had uh, three shows. And then <laughs> uh, two weeks after that, we had a uh, show scheduled, and then we were scheduled to go to Japan everything came to a screeching halt, you know? And um, the, the last show, like I said, we did was March 14th uh, on a Sunday, I believe. And I went to Florida that Wednesday and stayed in Florida, came down with a, with a, with a cough, no fever or anything, but I was coughing a lot. And uh, I was isolated. I wasn't around anybody. In fact, I just got a property in Florida. So I was waiting on deliveries. That's why I went there. And I said, you know what? It's kind of like scary here alone. And I'm feeling myself not well. I think I better go back home. Right. So I went back home. By the time I got home, I felt, felt fine. Uh, then Pennsylvania was offering uh, free testing. I went and had a nose swab, came back inconclusive. They called me back to take another one, uh, nose swab. They said they couldn't tell if I had it or not. And I said, you know what, let me go and have uh, a blood workup to find out whether I at least had the antibodies. And lo and behold, I had the antibodies. So you, you did have a bout of uh, COVID from the sound of it, is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but never no temperature, and I well, I'll be seventy one um, this year. Wow, and so <laughs> uh, I was just lucky not to have any any issues. But it's funny because the last show that we did, a few of the members in the in the group uh, came down with with COVID also. You know, so I think is that at that point that I got it, but by the end of April, I, it had ran its course with me. And when I went to get tested for anybody, that was in May, hmm. you know, and came home, we just been isolated, you know, been talking to the members, but no plans. Just, I knew we had a, for instance, we have a, had a date scheduled for, um, July 30th in Tampa at uh, Hard Rock Casino. Uh, we still haven't got the official word that it's canceled, mm. but with all going on in Florida now, I know it's inevitable to not to be canceled. So, yeah. but it's like no plans from our perspective. You know, like mm. it 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 came so quickly, and our road manager um, he came to me that someone approached him about us. Uh, doing a show in California, but recording it 
here in Philly to have it stream to like a drive-in theater. Hmm. Oh, okay. And I did hear about a show that um, it was a country of Western show that they did. And every, everyone that came to the show came in their car. So they were isolated within their cars and it was real successful, you know? So I said, okay. Hmm, that's, that's an idea, you know? So hopefully something might materialize with that, you know, but. So yeah, we have to look for alternative ways of doing things. Huh? Right. Family, how has it been for you? Uh, what have you been doing in this uh, lockdown time? Eat and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it very simple, basics. I know. Yeah. Coincidentally, it just happened when, uh, during the fasting month of Ramadan. Ah, okay. So I locked myself. I never stay at home for more than three days. After I was locked down, after I came back from uh, Jakarta, Bandung, for some working, uh, working with some friends on the found, found new materials, okay. and suddenly the news of COVID like dangerous. It's like dangerous. So I was forced to come back and I was stay at home for 14 days quarantine. Mm. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's quite short and bad, you know, because I never, never, it's never happened to me on this situation before. But I did uh, get some energy, uh, spirit by reading books listen to music, understand more about life, about uh, what's going on in the world. Mm. Something that invisible that you can't see by your eyes, but it's there. Uh, it was a bit like COVID also, right? Can't see yes, it. yes. <laughs> well, frankly, uh, mm. I pray very hard for, for the world, for these uh, things to slow down or, or, or disappear, you know, but, uh, but it uh, also teach me or, or the world to be more, say, uh, be careful. How hygiene, how cleanliness play a very big part in our life. Uh, that's it. Okay. So it looks like uh, all of you would probably have had some inspiration given the fact that you mm -hmm. had to quieten the mind uh, while you were in this position where you couldn't do anything anyway. Uh, does that mean you're going to be doing things differently from here on? I mean, like Ramli, would you have uh, new music that you might have developed uh, going in a slightly different direction? Yeah, there is actually, but uh, I need mean, uh, the groove, the feel is still there. The spirit of of working and uh, ideas, because I'm not used to work on this situation. I like to go into the studio, talking to friends, my musician friends, my ranger or whatever it is. And from there we create and we, we really groove along or we really sing along or we really create and uh, uh, so-called um, ideas from there. Mm. But this is something that you have to be all alone and you have to be by yourself. But you have to think deeply about the kind of music now this is a bit, I don't know how to say, but I'm basically it's rock and roll kind of thing. Uh, but we have to go to a different level, different style, different kind of, of music and sound. Uh, but I think it's helped me in a way to think deeper and higher. Mm. So are you going to be putting out a new album or something like that soon? Uh, at the moment, I'm working for the left-handed 40th anniversary ah. concert and album to produce some of their songs and, and tour. Okay. Uh, hopefully, I come up with 
my new album maybe next year. Okay, look yeah. forward to that. Yeah, Aaron, I mean, what what have you been doing? I mean, is there an album in the cards? <laughs> maybe I mean, Lee Nelson, uh, Bob Dylan have come up with new albums, so why not? Yeah, you? well, you know what? It's like we we are always um, we're looking for material and. Um, planning to uh to do something but you know ken we've always been i mean we haven't had a, a charted record in i would say in over uh 35 35 years and um luckily our our popular our music was popular enough to still keep us working so we've always been a, a working group yeah if if it, it came along that we can go into a studio, record a new project, we'd be the first ones there. But it's not the ones beating down our doors, you know, to put out something new. Uh, we're still surviving on hits from, you know, from the 70s. And that's how we've been running. So when this all this came about, um, like I said, we were steady working. I mean, it's not like we work six months out of the year, then we off six months, and then during that six months, you go into the studio and work a, a new project. We're working continuously. It's not 365 days, mm -hmm. but we're available for work all year long. And, you know, for this to stop the way that it is, it caught everybody off guard, you know. Uh, we're still told to to isolate, you know, we can't even get together and uh, rehearse <laughs> on on anything because of the restriction. It just everything is just no answer to man. That it's it's really frustrating. I found myself uh, becoming really depressed earlier today, mm -hmm. you know. And I said, you know, you need to get out of it. You know, we're not on lockdown where I can't get out and got, go in a car. Uh, I have a boat and I go out on the boat and maybe do some fishing to do something different. But other than that, uh, as far as the music, the <laughs> nothing, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there's nothing. Yeah, considering that uh, for a lot of people, music is, uh, especially with things, issues like depression, music helps to lift them and also set mm -hmm. them down. But, uh, you know, it, it, do you think there's, uh, music in you that you could develop, uh, and forget the the, the 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 record machinery, the the system, but just create your own stuff and put it out there and see what happens, see what catches, what flies. Is that something that might sort of take your mind off the fact that oh, there's no touring, there's no work. As an individual, or as an individual, or even with the other <laughs> members, because you can work separately and bring things together, yeah. right? Well, you know what it's like. I am I am doing some music, but what what I'm doing right now is I was always able to like read chords and and play chords and stuff like that. But the whole uh, understanding of music and uh, have a music chart and actually play note for note that's on the chart. Uh, I said oh, I have all this time. Let me teach myself piano. So I got an app on my iPad that everything I play the iPad hears. You know, and it's called uh, Simply Piano. And I, it, the two months that I've been doing it, I'm just amazed how much I have progressed just doing that. So, yeah, I am still doing music. I get down there sometime, and I'm like three, three and a half hours on the, on the piano. And I do it every day unless oh. I'm doing something else. You know, That's fantastic so. because I mean you may you may not see immediate return from that, but down the line, who knows, right? It could become something that you could uh, develop into music, an album, or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. uh, Loretta, what's what's it? Uh, how are you going to approach this differently? I mean, for you, it's kind of people assume you've got to have a venue, you've got to have uh, facilities, you've got to have an audience. But you're not going to get a mosh pit going in any time soon, not with this in these conditions. Mm. What what are your alternative strategies? Well, um, I mean, the past three months have been, you know, seeing what everyone is doing. You know, what all the bands, everyone is, kind of streaming their shows. 
Um, and two weeks ago, um, I, I was in touch with uh, the band Papa Roach. Mm. And it was, it was very organic how, you know, everything is coming together because in the normal world, you know, we would never talk to the band's management. It's always, you know, our, our business model is, you know, we go to the agent and then we, we, we do a deal with the agent direct. Mm -hmm. But on this time, um, during COVID-19, you know, times, you know, I've been introduced to the, to the management you know, of Papa Roach. And it was, it was fascinating because if this COVID-19 didn't come about, I wouldn't be having a happen. Zoom, this Zoom, you know, format of speaking to, you know, yeah. even Arian and, and Ramli and yourself. I mean, Kana, this is the first time we're doing it, right? I mean, among ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I was introduced on um, April 30th to the management of Papa Roach. I mean, these are like big players, you know, in, in the music industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I told them about my idea. You know, I, I have this idea. I want to do words and music. Bear in mind, the management of Papa Roach also takes care of Motley Crue. Mm -hmm. um, so I was sharing with them, I have this idea. I want to do, you know, I want to be a contribution to the artists, you know, I promote or, you know, new acts, new artists we want to promote in the future. And um, I, I gave them my idea and they said, okay, well, they gave me all the pointers. Okay, how about trying this? How about trying this? So that was April 30th. And then, you know, two and a half weeks went by. I contacted them again and I said, hey guys, um, anything we can do with uh, Papa Roach? And then, the, and then I didn't hear back from them. And the week after that, I saw that uh, Papa Roach was um, embarking on the live stream. You know, they were celebrating the 20th anniversary of their first album, Infest. Mm. And that to me mm. was, wow. So they, they, they recorded, they did their live show in, in a studio. They played the whole album for Infest. Mm. Mm. And they streamed it. So, and to me, you know, that was, this whole process is fascinating because if it weren't for the circuit breaker on COVID-19, you know, I would have never gotten in touch with the management. We've never done words and music. So it's kind of a, it's a learning curve, you know, it's, it's uncharted territories, uncharted waters, but, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't, you see, I, you know, Kana, we can't, I can't monetize those words and music. It's just something we're doing. It's more promotion. It's more marketing. There's, you know, I, I can't monetize this because it's, you know, it is what it is. And um, we're just trying to keep, you know, the, our fans on the website and our, you know, our social media platforms, LAMC Productions, you know, putting some content out there to get them connected whilst we don't have any live shows. Yep. So I guess this is just something that, um, you know, I've been doing uh, with my with my staff. They've been helping me, you know, um, you know, put this together. And and I think all of us have come, you know, we've come much closer, I find, you know. Mm -hmm. I find mm -hmm. it's a very good, you know, bonding that we're able, even though it's, you know, remotely, we've been able to, you know, we're Zooming, we're Skyping during, you know, the, the, so the there's a lot, more, a lot more discussion, digital Definitely. discussions taking place as a result of this. Definitely. Isn't it? So it, you're, you're meeting new people, you're finding oh, new ways of doing things. It's a and positive. Is it, is it is it possible to, you think it would make sense to do a concert to an empty hall, in an empty hall? I mean, yes. football is back, right? I mean, they have started their football matches uh, and they're playing to empty stadiums, but they've got cutouts of fans placed on the seats. And you, can buy, you can create a cutout of yourself if you want and put it up. Uh, and, uh, and the tournaments are con continuing. So similarly, could bands and groups see a potential of developing a business model in that way, at least until we can get people in large groups back together again? A lot of well, bands know, are doing that. Yeah, I was, and not, 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 to cut, not to cut anybody off, but, you know, I was, I was thinking, you know, from uh, a group standpoint, you want the promoter to make as much money as possible, okay? So you want to sell out a venue. If he has the restriction that he has to have uh, six feet, seven feet between people 
So he's cutting down his capacity to a half or either a third of what he would normally get. Then he then he's running out of money to pay pay a particular artist, even though he could still have people in the seats. But I think maybe if you got corporate America in involved in it, that could offset some of their expense and come up because if you record a venue that is it's half packed, then the promoter is not making enough money to pay the artist. But if he was advertising uh, a beer, a beer company or a liquor company, if they were sponsoring the shows, that could help offset his income. The artist can still make some money and then they can record it and stream it other places. But we're not going to get a promoter that that's going to hire hire us just to try to, to put the bodies in the seats until this is all cleared up. You know, it's and, and I'm I'm seeing shows when Japan fell out, we were supposed to do Japan and then after Japan do Hawaii. From Hawaii, you sort of did, had done Yoshi's in uh, San Francisco, well, in Oakland. And Yoshi's is maybe a 400-seat uh, venue. For them to, to pay us, they, they can't have 200 people in there, mm. you know, and still have to pay the artists. So the only way they're going to be able to make money or to get an artist in there is to have some type of corporate sponsor. That's the only way. So I think the, the role of uh, money is, uh, is a bit different now. Uh, you, you can't really say, I want to make the big bucks because uh, it's, just, it's just, just not possible now. So would streaming perhaps help, you know? Uh, Ramli, mm -hmm. in your case, have you had uh, much by way of uh, concerts that have to be cancelled because of COVID? How many shows did you have to cancel? Yes. There's a lot of concerts there. Yeah. But I just hope that uh, uh, this thing will end soon. But this also is a risk to, to the uh, promoter because this can happen anything and anytime. Talking about the comeback of COVID, let's say you organize, you set things, everything, you do your rehearsals, uh, promoter, promote the whole thing, what your shows and and suddenly, the return of the COVID again. The second so, wave, yeah. Uh, this is yeah. quite a risk, actually. There is a, a, a proposal from a uh, uh, certain uh, uh, promoter who want us to perform, but you only can cater for 500 seats, where the, the auditorium can fill about 1,005. And I think to make it, to, to cover the whole thing, uh, it's a bit hard. Uh, the cost is high. Isn't yeah, it? the cost is high. And uh, as, as a performer, how would you feel? Uh, you know, you've got a full audience, it, the energy is there, but you've got one third filled. How do you feel as a performer? But frankly, uh, personally, um, I'm okay. I'm relaxed. I can take the punches actually okay. because I believe and I have the strength to, to wait and see and uh, I have faith and I am I, I'm confident that uh, things will come back. Okay, good. I got a very strong feeling about this, and I don't. Sometimes you have to be too careful. Is also not really that cool. I think but music yeah. is generally not about being careful, right? It's about emotion. It's about passion. It's about a whole lot of yeah, other yeah. things as well. Yes. So we gotta let some of that fly. Um, yeah. We we also uh, for the attendees, if there are any questions that you would like to ask of the panelists, feel feel free to to put them in the chat. I have one question here. Um, it's to Aaron, but I think it also applies to the others. Uh, Aaron, you have a large fan base in Japan. How do you plan to keep in touch uh, with them or keep engaging them now that you cannot perform there? So I think in general, it's how do you keep your 
connection with your audience and your fans uh, alive? Well, we do have a website up and running and was talking to management today and uh, management suggested that to, to still keep the name out there that we start uh, streaming uh, videos of, of our actual performances. And we have enough uh, videos in our possession to, uh, to do that. Um, you know, uh, it just, it, I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answers. I don't know. Uh, the, the people that I'm, I'm friendly with in, in Japan, uh, we communicate uh, by way of email and, and text messages. But as far as the fan base, I have a good friend in Osaka. And like I said last week, I was thinking, I was told that we were definitely going to Japan. And I found out uh, today, yeah, I found out earlier today that Japan is being canceled. You know, you know so what are we going to do? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But in terms of reaching out yeah. to your fan base, you, well, you could stream your videos. I mean, maybe there's an opportunity mm -hmm. also to let fans into your live show. You know, you can of course control the environment, but show a bit about what you're doing. I mean, learning the piano, uh, you know, just little bits and pieces. You know, like it's, it's, it's glimpses funny. into have, your life, isn't it? I have a, I have a good friend in uh, Japan. His, his name is, is Masa, and he has a huge fishing boat. And when we come, uh, he takes me fishing. I think I'm the only one in the group that loves fishing. But he takes us, and he texts me today because I text, I emailed him to find out how his, his family was doing. And he said the same thing to me, uh, that I, I need to be more visual on uh, on Facebook with with my personal life. But see... It's like, and I thought about what he was saying, like I was out fishing on on my boat. To me, to take pictures of me on my boat, fishing and sending it out to the, it's like bragging. But that's you know? acceptable, right? That's accepted but behavior these days. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that, that person, you know? I'm not a private person per se, but to, to, to tell people what I have, and what I'm able to do, you know, that's that that doesn't feel good to my nature. That doesn't feel good to my to my spirit. Maybe so, Loretta might have something to say about that because you've been dealing with a lot of the younger bands as well, and some mm -hmm. of the older bands. They, I think people have bands have to change their approach to how they promote themselves these days. The audience out there in social media, they want to see things that they haven't seen before. Definitely. A concert performance is great, but they want more. You know, you know, you know, Kanan and um, Orion, and also for Ramli, you know, this um, this time, um, of course, you know, in the midst of this pandemic, um, we've also had the time to, you know, be aware of the racial unrest, mm -hmm. and um, this is something that um, it has affected me a lot. Um, I, I would. I would have never paid so much attention to the racial unrest, first, of course, in America, um, if we were not stuck at home. Correct. Um, you know, so, um, you know, this, this whole thing about being at home, I, uh, I, I, I uh, really looked into the racial unrest in America um, ever since, I guess I knew it was there, but I didn't, I was not able to, you know, um, study it. And I take, you know, I take all the artists, right? All, you know, if I, every, every artist, like I, for granted sometimes. And this whole mm. period of being able to uh, be at home and, and watch what's going on gave me a new appreciation for my business. You know, really mm. truthfully um, gave me appreciation for all the, you know, not only just to the the black, you know, Amer African American acts, but you know, also mm -hmm. the the artists and celebrities of people of color. You know, I became you know more aware, more in tuned, um, and what I did 
uh, last Saturday was uh, I watched this very good documentary, and I'm this question is coming back to you about Kanan saying what can artists like yourself do to put yourself out there. So mm-hmm. I watched this documentary on Sam Cook, mm-hmm. and I think you know if if you'll have the time, you know this was Netflix just put it out in 2019. I think it's good to see those old if you could put out old footages of yourself both Ramli and Arian, I think this is what fans are hungry to see, the old times, where these old photos were not available, you know, in, in you know, in, I guess, 10 years ago. Right. You know? So people, yeah. people, fans, music fans definitely want to see these, you know, germs, you know, mm-hmm. for, for Ramli and Arian. Fresh. Mm. Um, isn't it? Yeah. All, all things yeah. fresh. Um, and see, any, anything music related, group related, I don't have a, a, a problem sharing anything. And I mean, we we got together, uh, Canon, Canon thought it was in the 60s, <laughs> but we got, we got together in, in the 70s. And that was before video, you know, before digital stuff, you know, so uh, there wasn't a lot of a footage on anything. We didn't start uh, getting any uh, video footage of shows until later in years, you know. So we do have that stuff, but going back to the beginning, unless there's snapshots, mm. we may have some some stuff like that. But, yeah, but even snapshots you know, can be that. repurposed, right? I mean, you put it to music, you yeah. A sort of animation out of it, and you've got something that you can put up and share with your audience. Um, now on yeah. on our website, we have we have a lot of uh, back in the day when I had the big afro. <laughs> now those days are gone, <laughs> but the, we have <laughs> those <to> clubs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. We have we have that 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 stuff like that, and you, and you can find it everywhere. But as far as uh, having the the market uh, strategy to to do that, um, we could we could, but we but we haven't. Yeah, probably you've uh, you've your fan base is um, how how would you describe your fan base? I mean, is it uh, a lot of city people or a lot of country? Is it a mix? It's a mix. Uh, it's a mix. Uh, yeah, and and. Can they access you on social media much? Yes. Or do they have to watch your content? Instagram. Instagram. Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, Instagram, um, Facebook. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you're being, I hear Julia in the background giving you advice. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, <laughs> but, but in terms of um, concert videos and stuff, do you have that? Or is it more stills? Oh, yeah, working on that actually, I was, I was forced to. <laughs> but uh, I think it's very important uh, for me uh, to share, like what Roger said is about sharing all the old photograph, old uh, recording, all the, all the bootlegs mm. to share, and because that is what the fan uh, missing and looking for. I think uh, it is very important for, yeah. for uh, at, the, at this situation, we need to push harder. And, and I think, uh, and I understand what's, what it's all about, actually. And also, I think, you know, um, the stuff that you're talking about, the pictures from the past, uh, if you are trying to reach a new audience, they would not be familiar with any of that at all, in all yeah. likelihood, right? So it's a new generation that you're going to reach out to. Uh, and for them, this would all be fresh. And it's like, wow, fantastic. You know, it's a chance to understand where the music came from. You know, what were the origins of it? The people, the, the atmosphere, the environment. So it would be a wonderful way of uh, taking, giving them a lesson in the history of your music, your journey. Uh, and that would be wonderful if you could you know, do something like yeah. that and, and get the word out, let mm. more people know about it, right? Yes. And You're then right. when the concerts come back out again, you could probably put that on as a backdrop or, or whatever. But I think 
uh, the approach to music will probably change. And I think we've seen significant changes in the music industry, right? From the whole structured uh, record uh, artists, the A&R man and all that kind of stuff to individual recordings. And now you could even do it in different rooms. I know like uh, Jeremy Montero is doing his concerts on a regular basis on air. And he does it with artists in other parts of the world in their own little place spaces, but they perform together live virtually. You know, so something like that. I think the audience will also be a bit more forgiving. They know, they understand that this is a totally new way of doing things. But if you're giving it an, a, a go, you're attempting it, I think they will see value in that in itself. What do you think, Loretta? Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. If um you know, like for the case of Ramli Sarip, I mean, people definitely want to know the history. They want to see the, all the old pictures, you know, the previous, whatever, even your know, newspaper articles, you know, um, because people, fans, your fans will be hungry to, to know, you know, the new fans, there, there, there will be new fans. The fact that for myself, um, like, you know, for, for Sam Cooke, like I'm just going back to oops, I'm just going back to study on study him now. So yeah. when when I did that process, oh, I found out that oh, his daughter is a Womack, Linda Womack, and she sang mm -hmm. the song Teardrops. So that got me so, and I was so excited that I wanted to reach out to them too. So you know, when you, when you do these things, you you will get more fans, the hardcore fans you know, wanting to reach out to you and, and who knows, book you, book you for shows when they can see your history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just like for the stylistics, I'm sure you have a lot of stories too, you know? Yeah, we have a few. People you <laughs> worked with, you know? Published. Like, right. like, um, like what I found out, like um, watching the Sam Cooke, um, like Dionne Warwick was in that restaurant where, you know, uh, she was having an after show meal with Sam Cooke. And uh, there was a lot of, you know, racial segregation back in those days, right? The segregation, right. audience segregation. So, and and um, I think uh, she she fought back towards the waitress. Mm -hmm. and, and then the two policemen went to the tour bus, but Sam Cook stood up for her. So she could, the fact that she related that story made me like, wow, I, I promoted, we brought Dion Warwick twice to Singapore and once okay. in Bangkok. So this got me so excited to want to talk to her now. And bring mm. her back. Yeah, bring we've worked with Dion quite a quite a few times. Yeah, yeah. and I know you, yeah, you got some moment. hits with her, right? Yeah. 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 In fact, the same producer, uh, mm -hmm. Tom Bell, did Dion work and he did us also. Yeah. Okay, so, so this mm -hmm. this are the stories that uh, I've got a, a point here from uh, one of the Arvin says today more than ever is the era of storytelling. And we need the stories from role models like yourselves. Um, so I think, you know, you're probably telling things which a lot of people may not be aware of. You might be mm -hmm. able to put things into perspective and in, in context, right? Um, so we are, we are just about out of time. I just wanted each of you to um, give me uh, maybe a short thing about what this past few months uh, how the past few months have changed you, Loretta? Um, I guess to take a break. I think I've yeah. not been able to take a break. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Aaron? Well, um, how vulnerable um, we are all. You know, it's uh, from my perspective, um, besides dealing with the COVID, you know, uh, dealing with uh, and, and, and seeing the, the demonstrations, seeing what's going on um, here in the United States. I mean, uh, numbers are going back up again on some places that have, have had the curve came down flat. Uh, out of all the countries of the world, we're doing the worst as far as the COVID. You know, everything is like, I, I was really depressed. I was so depressed. I was saying to myself, you know, like, 
you know, okay, I'm done. I'm like, if anything, if anything happens, I'm okay. I've, I've enjoyed my life. I just don't know where we're all headed. You know, uh, this, this racism that's been going on here in this country has not just something that just started. You know, it's something that's been going on for eons. And I had a good conversation with uh, one of the white guys in the group. And he was saying, like, you know, he know he, he comes from privilege, but he doesn't didn't realize until he started hearing some of the conversations going on uh, from the, the murder of, of Floyd. Yeah. You know, and I was saying, well, you know, this is something a, a black child is raised here in the States. They're, they're told, okay, the police stop you. Don't don't act like you're reaching for something. Don't act like you're reaching for your wallet. I said, now, the buddy that I was talking to has a white son. I said, have you ever told your son that? And he said, no. I see, you don't even think on along those same lines, you know? So I was like, again, depressed. And I'm thinking, where do we go here? Why is it, what have we done that these people white people here in America hate black people so much. You know, and it's, and it's frustrating, you know, really, really frustrating. I think maybe the main thing is to keep singing and they'll realize where everything stands. But we should get out of that depression, start thinking positive things uh, and look for a better better road ahead. It, it has, it is there, it is there. Yeah. Yeah. Ramli, your, your, your thoughts, okay. please. I'm not used to this situation, actually. But I have to accept. Uh, I have to be more patient, understand about uh, what's going on. So, but I'm looking forward mm, to rock and roll. Very good. Loretta, Erin, Ramli, thank you so much for being uh, on the chat with me. Wonderful hearing all your various stories and also appreciate the fact that you've all been through different sorts of emotions in terms of the, the business and in terms of how you are interacting with uh, or accepting the whole situation. But I always say let the music play and let the music flow and we will all come out of this better. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Yeah, Have a great Thank day. Thank you, Kanan. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for talking with everybody. I, I truly enjoyed it. See ya. Bye.